G'day trainers and welcome back to episode 2 of Pokemon D&D Behind the Scenes, the series where myself and fellow players are going to be breaking down the previous week's episode uh, in pretty much every detail that we can think of, discuss theories and do our absolute best not to metagame and plot against the players that have not joined with us. Whether we're going to be able to do that or not, only time will tell. Joining me today, I've got Cooper, who plays Coops. Yo, here we go. I've got Christmas, who plays Volt the Third. Oh, hey, Ron. Mm, Volt, mate, you are you two. You two are. <laughs> what do I? What do I even say about you two in this last session? Uh, you know what? What was going, Cooper? What was going through your head this session? To be honest, uh, it's hard. It's hard to explain. Really, it was just more going with the flow at the moment. Um seeing what pops up and yeah the opportunity came up with vault um to share a room and yeah everything just kind of happened all there at once so. yeah okay I, I was talking about some things that happened later but you know what that's good maybe we don't yeah. skip ahead because i i definitely want to talk about some stuff that happened later on in the game <laughs> uh, <laughs> um yeah so we spent our first night uh in in the pokemon center and yeah uh, Bolt, buddy, Christmas, mate. Who just goes knocking on people's doors at midnight, man? The curious cat. <clears throat> I couldn't sleep, and so? I, I wanted to know who was behind the door, and it was very abrasive. I mean, it was I mean, midnight. We, we, yes, <laughs> we we never knew that the, it might have been a little peephole. You could have peeped out and thought it was me, but I mean, I didn't come out hostile. I could have come out hostile. I could have. I mean, I don't really have any static, but I could have, I could have used a uh, surge, surge, and uh, come and <laughs> been a bit more aggressive. But I came over just curiosity killed me, and I wanted to know who had it. So, okay. yeah. Uh, what, uh, <laughs> what, what would have happened if Jet had welcomed you a bit more warm-heartedly? Um, I mean, obviously not in game, but obviously, like we we all knew your attempt at breeding. Um, God, yeah. Let's, uh, yeah. Not, let's not talk about that for too long. <laughs> an, an attempt. Oh, an yeah. attempt. <laughs> I've um, regretted it ever since. Uh, I'm sure they've regretted it too. <laughs> uh, but no, I mean, obviously, like off game, I, I didn't know that as a as a character. But you know, we we could have looked at attempting to breed again. I might have had more high stats in terms of that with you. I could have um helped you out in terms of that. So I guess my, my whole uh, I guess the storyline of going there was just that I was very curious with Nurse Joy mm. not telling me who it was, and I guess a bit curious as to who would pay and, and why. So, I mean, I was probably fetching for more answers than I was more curious. So, but um, you weren't very welcoming. No, <laughs> I mean, it's twelve o'clock at night. Fair yeah, enough, I, I don't think you would have. I don't think anyone really would have been. No, someone come knocking on my door at 12 o'clock at night. I can't say I'll be very welcoming, so I understand that. Um, so, yeah, no, it was, um, I mean, I was very curious as to, to what you're doing in that room, and it was it's a bit of a, a bummer that we didn't get to see it as a group, that your attempt at breeding... We oh, I think it's a good. Th I think it's a good thing we didn't all see it. <laughs> I mean, we Fairly probably... On. What was that, man? But... I was, I was going to say, it was so early on, too. <laughs> like, I, I had it planned well, the second yeah. I leveled up and uh, and went to level two and realized I could get the breeder skill. Uh, I'm like, oh my god, I can do this right away. I feel like, and, and I've actually spoken to Emily about this, I feel like maybe we shouldn't be able to breed them right away. I, I can't remember if it was part of the, like, the Pokemon 5e rules, the ones that were sort of thrown away. But I think that had some sort of like a loyalty system in place where you couldn't actually try to have your Pokemon breed unless they were like hyperly loyal to you. Um, yeah. Which I, I personally I'd prefer. Um, I'm glad it. I'm glad it didn't. The uh, the sh the attempt at breeding didn't work uh, because I think that could have set a bad precedent. Well, I mean, your Pokemon. They forgave you, uh, for what it's worth. Yeah, thankfully. Otherwise, you would have had a very interesting party. Um, <laughs> not had a great run from there. But, uh, I mean, yeah, I understand why. I understand why it could it could uh, jeopardize the game pretty early on. I mean, you'd have a pretty powerful uh, either Charmander or Lilatar off the bat. 
um, with yeah. the moves. So, but loyalty, I mean, eh, they'll grow. They'll grow loyalty. Um, yeah. Well, not only about the power. I mean, could you imagine how much you could probably sell Charmander or Lavatar eggs for? I'd probably I'm, be first in yeah. line to buy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I imagine all of I you would imagine be. Imagine that. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Yeah. Um, so that was that was actually my original thought. I'm like, oh, I could breed these, and then I could either sell them or use them to get information. Uh, because there is something there is something Jet's trying to do apart from take on the league challenge and become the champion. It hasn't come out yet, but there's a uh, there's something else going on. I mean, we could speculate. I mean, speculate away. I, so I, I mean, <laughs> looking at it from an outfighter's point of view, I mean, you you tried to swindle Dennis in terms of money or items. I didn't uh, try to swindle anyone. You attempted to uh, get I him attempted to, to I sponsor attempted, you. Yeah, that's not swindling. That's a business deal. Uh, have you ever seen in Pokemon anyone get sponsored? Yeah, Pokemon Sword and Shield, man. Look at Leon's cape, dude. It's covered in sponsorship. Is it? Uh, yeah, go have a look. Damn, I better look again. Yeah, that's what gave me the idea. I'm like, oh, hold on. Places are actually sponsoring him. Yeah, as Leon a has a. Do you have a cat? Me? No, but I would have. I would have sewed it on somewhere. Would have been... <laughs> made made a cape just for that. Just, just made a cape. Oh, yeah. I mean, looking at it, you could look at it and think that you're also a bit money hungry or a bit item greedy. So, I mean, in terms of if you wanted to sell off eggs, I mean, you would have definitely had my business. I would have purchased one. I mean, depending on how much it was, of course, but it would have been maybe, a bit. Your, maybe your alternative mode is you just want to get rich as well. Look, I, I don't think my, my motive is to get rich. It, it'd be nice. I mean, the more money we got, the more things we can do. Uh, but, yeah, I, I don't think one of my motives is to get rich. There goes my speculation then. <laughs> uh, we we all got to earn some pokey dollars some way, so yeah, right. Very true. Very yeah. True. yeah. Uh, hey, we're in episode one when uh when you beat Halley Cooper. Did you get any money for that? Uh no, not at all. Really? At all. No, I got absolutely nothing except for experience. So. Jeez. All right. Yeah. You know what? That's a note that we'd need to chuck towards our DM man. Because yeah, how else are we meant to make money? Or is that well, going to be yeah. part of the danger? We have to find ways to earn money. Well, that's, yeah, that's the thing that could, the way that you try to do it at, um, where was it? Pewter Town, was it? Where we started? Uh, not yeah. over it. Uh, we, haven't, we haven't gotten yeah. to Pewter yet. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Um, yeah, like, this might be have to be, you know, try and gain some sponsorship or bribe someone or mm -hmm. whatever. So, yeah. Could be real interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and but yeah, definitely something to bring out. Yeah, yeah, and obviously D Pokemon D and D has been a huge talking point on uh, on my streams lately, um, and and I've been stating that yeah, it's been a huge. It's been like it's probably actually f like fifty percent of the conversation that's happening on streams at the moment. I'm loving it so much. <laughs> that's um, awesome. But uh, <laughs> there's there's something that keeps coming up, and I and I keep saying I I'm envisioning Jet to just be like a a genuinely dedicated trainer, but. I, I I don't want to put in a false this sort of false image of him. He'll do what he needs to do. And I'm saying that because you said, you know, you, you can bribe people. Jet will bribe people. I promise you, there are going to be certain characters we see and we run into that Jet is going to physically hurt. Like, he, he it might border to, on torture if he doesn't get the information he needs sooner. Like, it, he's not, yeah. he's not like that perfect goody-goody character. But I don't think he's a bad character, and I think that's going to be hard to understand until you guys get to see what I yeah, mean. I yeah, mean, haven't you got high charm? I know. So, so why are you why are you going violent for for a charm effect? Like this, uh, the, these people that Jet's going to resort to violence with if required, they've they've wronged him. They've they've done they've done something pretty bad. Ooh, okay, okay. Yeah. All right, so you've got a bit of a uh, fire Gosh. in your belly about something. I definitely do. Mm, yeah, that would be interesting to find do. out. Is that going to come out soon, or is that like a late game kind of thing? Uh, it'll. I think it'll start to come out if we, if and when we run into certain characters. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I mean, you were you were not a character who believes in religion in the game. We are. 
We determined that with old man. Jeez, you were on. <laughs> to be yeah, fair, right. I'm the only one who asked him clarifying questions. He he mentioned the three branches of Archaeism. You guys were just happy to take his uh, take his <clears throat> uh pamphlet and berries. I I pushed that conversation, though, man. I, I was having him try to explain himself. Um. But yeah, I, I think I think something we're going to have to do is us five as players. We might have to start to sacrifice some of those. Oh my god! Immediately, I want to try and do this, this, and this because we are slowing the game down a lot. I think if we hadn't mm. already slowed the game down or if we didn't have such a slow start, I probably would have engaged in conversation with this guy a bit more. But I think by this time it was what like it was like twelve thirty in the morning. Yeah, it was like <laughs> way we'll get tired. Yeah. Um, and I'm like, dude. <laughs> I get it. You're like, you're a born again Arceus Christian. I just, I don't have time for this right now. I'm tired. <laughs> I want to go try and catch a Pokemon. Yeah, I mean, um, I was, I was going to ask him about the three branches, but you, you beat me to the gun there. But I, I knew, I knew something because like our DM mm. was saying, like, this is very important. Stay around. Like, it won't take long. And I'm like, all right. Like, and I'm looking at the time as well. I'm like, come yeah. on, like, bloody hell. But, I was just like, if this is important, something that we should know. But I like the fact that you're like, come on, you got 30 seconds to explain. Hurry up, let's go. And at that point, I think we're all like, come on. (laughs) So you guys are going to be very glad you took a pamphlet. Maybe. So I uh, I spoke with the DM afterwards and she was telling me about what one of her ideas is. She didn't go into detail, of course. Um, But and I don't know if I can say it here. I mean, I, I know about it as well. She Do you know about it? Yeah. She talks um, to him. Uh, she, he, no, 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 no. I don't want everyone to know, though. I, I'm not saying it. I'm not saying it. We'll um, tell Coops after. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Or we could just write it in the players' chat. No one can see it, there, So. Um, can... Yeah, but you guys are going to be glad you guys took a pamphlet. And the thing is, I know, but Jet doesn't know. So all I'm thinking is, oh, can I, can I try and pickpocket one of you guys? But... Why would I? Jet doesn't know there's going to be any significance. <laughs> oh, wow. Pickpocket. <laughs> I mean, we have only seen one steal attempt, to be fair. So. And it was it atrocious. Meant, it, was, it was a very <laughs> bad one. It was, it was a bad one. one. Yeah. Oh. Uh, no, it was, it was, at that point, I think we were all just like, hurry up. Like, it's, it's literally like me knocking on your door at that point. I think it, that's what impressed. it was and yeah. at that time i'm like oh we're getting so close to the time when my kids usually start to wake up and need me to get them back to sleep and i'm like oh no it's gonna overlap <laughs> real quick real soon and then the other oh. thing that we've got to talk about is is um i mean obviously you weren't in the room so it was me and cooper um without metagaming a little bit i, I kind of manipulated that situation a little bit as well um in terms of making cooper tick a little bit because i knew yeah, you said I came out. Story. Yeah, because you yeah, know a little so. bit about his book backstory. Uh, yep. Coop, Coops, do you want to tell us from what you've told? Don't don't reveal anything new, but do you just want to tell everyone Cooper's backstory? Uh, so, yeah. So, Cooper came from Castella City, um, which is in the Nova region. And growing up in a big city, uh, there was a lot of, a lot of kids and people around and you know trying to fit in and yeah he became he became you know he succumbed to a lot of bullying and and harm and his parents weren't there because they were working full-time jobs working in the account and, and store and one running the store so um yeah he's tr- trying to find his way through um mm-hmm. he's really determined to um determined to do the best that he can and try and overcome any challenges that will come his way so see i i think uh i think cooper actually might have the most noble of goals like (laughs) while while cooper's and jets are very similar i think coops's comes from a much more noble place like i i just sort of want to i can't go into too much but yeah, I don't know. I I, I like your story, man. It, it's simple, but it's it's powerful. I like it. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Obviously, the relationship with uh, Jet isn't going so great. <laughs> but no. um, yeah. But I uh, like from Cooper's perspective. From like, I see Jet as a bit of a bully. Like, you know, he 
um, tried to manipulate uh, Dennis in the Pokemart. You know, kind of not threatened him, but he was, you know, waiting patient, unpatiently outside for ages. And it just, yeah. And then, I don't know, just in moments you see Jet trying to be the, you know, big, strong leader, and he is, 100%, but I don't know. <laughs> There's no reason for Cooper. He just doesn't feel that with Jet just yet. Yeah, I, I, gen- I genuinely hope that Cooper and Jet maybe not become besties, but I hope they find a way to be able to work together. Well, yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, <laughs> I mean, like, you saw what happened <laughs> later on. <laughs> we'll obviously, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I actually kind of regret that that decision a little bit. Um, oh, I, I do. To I, be I honest, it. it's probably the right decision at the time, to be honest, and <laughs> probably the right move, to be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, um, so obviously being from the Unibar region, man, uh, unless if this is going to be part of the, your sort of character arc, did your parents come over? Like, did all of you move over or for some reason, Cooper just decided, Hey, I'm going no, all the way no. out to the sticks. I'm going out to like the farthest place out and that's Kanto. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Basically just wants to start his own adventure and you know, whatever comes of it comes. Uh... Yeah. yeah. Nice, nice. And I guess if you want to get further away, you can't get much further away from Castellar City than, you know, Viridian City. Viridian, yeah, exactly (laughs) right. (laughs) (laughs) What? Uh, Mr. Vault, man. Yes. Yes. I'm worried for yours and Finn's mental health. (laughs) Genuinely. Genuinely. genuinely, Why? Why? I I am. So, first of all, Finn, I am scared that that dude is just like, so we know that he, the, Hoenn region was hit with like terrible storms. His family was displaced. Um, the fact that he's always just sort of falling asleep is making me think that he's not sleeping at night. He's he's having PTSD. He's having these nightmares and can't sleep. I'm genuinely uh, scared and worried for him. Um, but you, man, I at the moment you're a bit of a dick. But, <laughs> but. That's a way to put it. I'll give you that. That's a polite way to put it. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so you're 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 not the nicest, but I I don't think you're intentionally trying to be that way. I I think um, if I my work or Jet's working theory is, does the group know your backstory about your uh, about uh, Cinnabar Island and then your grandma? Yeah, yeah. We do. So okay. we uh, actually not as a group. No, introduction wise, I told everyone that where I came. We know from about your grandma thing. though because of cushion. Yes. Yeah, you do know about my grandma, but you don't know about in terms of my mum and dad passing away. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So uh, my my feeling is, you know, obviously he was close with his grandmother. Uh, her her passing has hit him really hard. He's uh maybe struggling with that. Maybe I don't know. Maybe his grandmother had a bunch of debt that he's now being saddled with. Uh, I I don't think that's it though. But maybe. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, I I, th- I think. I think Vault the Third and Finn are both dealing with a lot of stuff, and they're both using two different coping mechanisms to, to try to get through their day. Uh, I mean, without really ruining like my story as a character, I yes, I am a dick, and it's not probably the appropriate way to deal with a lot of the interactions within the group, but I don't mean it. It may seem like I'm very calculative. I'm, I'm, I know exactly what I'm doing, how I'm doing it, manipulating my way around it. Um, but It really does. It looks like you're just <laughs> trying to attack and get in with every single person. Uh, I mean, a lot of people, to be fair, a lot of people are not taking my shit. Like, Cooper's Finn, really the only one who, who's, Cooper who's putting up with you. He's putting yeah, up I mean, with you at the moment. Me and Cooper bonded. We we said sorry to straight off the bat. Like, I apologize for pushing him into Halley. You know, we we both fisted and it was all good from there. Um, and I think Cooper's really the only one that's ever seen me upset uh, as an individual. Um, like when he I didn't was in the see ring. you crying though, did he? Because you wiped. He the, saw he me said wipe you... my tears, but uh, yeah, he uh, he doesn't know why I'm upset. So he he obviously knows that I was upset, and I'm yep. probably the only he's the only person I've showed emotion to so far. Apart from that, yep. I'm very blasé. Don't really like showing people what mm. what I'm uh, dealing with, but. 
without going and, and ruining my di- like story, I'm I'm not meaning to be a dick. I am a dick, and I'll hundred percent admit that I'm being a dick at the moment. But I, I'm it, it's not intentional. I just don't think that, and it's something that will come out later. But I think you'll understand that I don't know how to deal with emotions correctly, mm-hmm. and that comes a lot from my my past in terms of it all. But it's um. It, it's maybe who really your parents hard. were? Uh, maybe who my parents were. It might have been that. It might have been the fact that I've had loss of my uh, my mum and dad. I might have survived. I mean, for those people that uh, were aware, Cinnabar Owen had the massive uh, volcano that erupted and, and wiped out the town. I mean, I, I might have been going through a traumatic event. I might have watched mum and dad burn or, you know, that's that's very horrific. Yeah, and that's horrific. PTSD, but, you know, like, I think that a lot of it has... Um, mm understood yeah have you two heard the theory of why or a, a maybe a popular theory as to why cinnabar island erupted not at no. all <laughs> okay so the theory is that uh red caused it red red so uh after oh, i can't remember if it's before or after he becomes the pokemon league champion i think it's after but he goes to the seafoam islands which is just east of yep. cinnabar island which is where the new cinnabar gym gets set up um, but within the Cinnabar Islands, there are the sea foam caves. Oh, sorry, within uh, uh, within there, there are the sea foam caves, and inside there, like deep, deep inside, is where Articuno lives, yep. which he then captures. So the theory is that after Red captures and removes Articuno from this place, all of its icy, uh, cooling powers were no longer there. So the theory is that it was connected to some sort of like underground chasm, which connected to the volcano in some way. And by capturing and removing uh, Articuno, mm-hmm. there was nothing there to keep the, hold it back. Keep the... Yeah, nothing there to hold it back. Nothing there to keep the, oh, the yeah. lava cool and from erupting. No, I've never heard that theory. Not never heard that. Theory. That's yeah. a cool theory, though. I like that. Yeah. Well, I like it because it, it puts a bit of a... It, it puts a bit of, like, holy crap. All you were trying to do was catch a Pokemon. But by catching just this one Pokemon, you wiped out an island. You killed people. Like, <laughs> like you, you don't think about that. I, I no, guarantee it wasn't going through Jet's head when he was trying to catch those, uh, catch those polywag. Oh, let's not talk about polywag. <laughs> I've not got a good nickname from that. <laughs> um, uh... Yeah. So, like I said, I, I think, I, I think it's yeah, just like that. I don't think Jet. I don't think Bolt's trying to be that bad. Um, it definitely seems that way, and I definitely think he. He might actually be the least trusted person in the group at the moment. Uh, As a matter of fact, he is the least trusted person. Uh, yeah, I mean, looking at the group, yeah, yeah. fair enough. <laughs> um, everyone else, I mean, 100%. I, I've tried yeah. to make amends where possible. You know, I took accountability and, and owned up to Vergas. Vergas didn't yep. appreciate it. And from from Vault's point of view, <laughs> he was threatening in a nature. Um, he attempted to make friends with, with Finn. Finn. Finn approved at that point. It'll but, be fine. I think I was a little bit, a little bit hurt as a character that didn't want to accept the magic cup, and then later on that he accepted an opportunity to catch a polywag with you. Yes, so, I, yes, I was a little bit hurt. <laughs> I, as as that was happening, that was sitting in my mind. I was, I was gonna, I wanted to just yell and be like, "Hey, Volt, this is what being a good friend looks like." Um, wow. and I'm like, and I'm like, eh. But yeah, I, I did pick up on that. The difference was you were just going to give it to him. I didn't really give it to him. I he still had to try to work for it a little bit. Uh, I mean, yeah, I, I was giving him an opportunity without even wasting a pokeball. There was no catch behind it, and it wasn't. I I honestly think, I mean, outsider's perspective here, um, Magic Up is not something that I really want in my Pokemon list. So I thought, well, it's a good little make amends. Um, or Obviously, uh, um, if we ha- so if we have to camp out in in our Viridian Forest, we could have sushi for dinner. Talking about my Pokemon, be very careful, my friend. <laughs> I'm a Poliwag Slayer, right? <laughs> if you've got a Poliwag, <laughs> be careful what you say. No, but um, I just think that it was um, it's not a Pokemon I've invested XP in. Every XP that I'm putting in is either in Cushion or in in uh, Surge, um. But yeah, I was I was a bit butthurt that he didn't he didn't um, accept my my proposal. I mean, not that there was a proposal; it was more just an offering. But it was um, 
it was different. And I was yeah. a bit shattered that I didn't get to catch a second magic up. I was a bit um a bit shocked that once I killed it that was it. Yeah. So. And, and at first I'll be honest, I didn't like that. I'm like, oh, that doesn't make sense to me. But then I'm like, you know what, if we're going by game logic, you can't catch a Pokemon after it's knocked out. Yeah, hundred percent. I think so. the, the the only thing that I I didn't the hardest thing that came to terms in terms of that particular encounter, I was just like, yeah, I'm vested. Is it a male or female? Like, I yep. want to know. I want to know is mine a male or female. Um, I wanted to like breed. That was that was yep. my proposal. Um, and then when I found out it was female, I'm like, all guns are blazing. I'm happy. I found out from the DM that she was like, originally, originally, in her defense, she said, yeah, yeah, once it's yeah. painted, you get an opportunity. So I'm like, yeah, cool. I'll kill it. I'll get XP. I'll ca- attempt to catch it. I get double the best both worlds. I kill it. And then she's like, oh, well, you get XP. And I'm like, oh, well, that's not what I wanted to do. <laughs> there goes my <laughs> encounter. So, but okay, we don't have enough time. So yeah, that was um that was a, a big part of my plan straight away because I'm like, magic up. Yeah, cool. I can breed it um i can get you know powerful magic up and then you know turn it into a gyarados and that that's a pretty good solid start mm-hmm. you can get that, that was apart. my thought when i went fishing for it originally yeah yeah <laughs> so <laughs> it was a bit dawning but i think that um it wasn't great the abilities it only had splash nah. a level four and um yeah you'd still have to put it get 16 more levels before he was going to evolve does he evolve at level 20 uh, in the games magic up does yeah uh i'm not sure how it goes in this one i don't know if amy's gonna follow the pokedex which i think she might um but i think they they evolve earlier i have a look at those so i think they only go up to pokemon go up to level 20 yeah 20 in this i remember reading on that one yeah no i think it was i think it was 20 i think that's what the dm was saying yeah Um, but let's talk about the event let's talk Uh, about Wait, wait, which event? Because we still got a lot which to one? cover. Yeah, it's yeah. a lot. I mean, let's talk about let's talk about Cooper. Why did you run it? Why did you run it, Pokezoid? Whoa, 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 whoa! We're not there yet, man. That's it. <laughs> We're not there. That that's getting towards the end of everything. <laughs> All that's, right. that's getting towards the end. <laughs> uh, what what were you guys thinking about the the old man? What do you think uh, Arceusism is going to play a pivotal role in the story? Uh, still not 100% sure at this stage. Um, if you remember, he was a drunk old man, so... Oh, he'd been, he'd been he sober gave... for about two years. But, yeah. I mean, yeah, it's a bit interesting. It's going to be interesting if he comes back into the story or how that all works out. But, I have been... Yeah. Sorry, I've been waiting for this all week because I wanted to ask, do either of you two realise who that old man is? Yeah. You realise? Not at all. Yeah. So... In the Generation 1 and 3 versions of Kanto, uh, and even Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee, sorry, so the Gen 7 ones too, there stop the, there's a drunk... Old, okay, in the English version, so like in the Western releases, there's an old man who's blocking the pathway out of Viridian City, uh, and he won't let you pass until he's had his morning coffee, uh, and you can't do that until you, like, you go to the Pokemon and the regular stuff, and then he'll teach you how to catch a Pokemon. In the Japanese he's not waiting for a coffee. He's passed out drunk and he's hungover. Uh, just in the street, passed out drunk in the street. Um, but yeah, he'll still teach you how to catch his Pokemon. And remember how we had a Beedrill? Yeah. When you play those games, so you're playing as Red, he teaches you how to catch a Weedle. So that that uh, that Beedrill he had with him is an evolved version of the starter Pokemon, that tutorial how to catch Pokemon that this old man has been teaching us since 1996. Man, I love that. When she said I was just... That's so weird. When she first said I used to just be this drunk old man, that uh, you guys couldn't see my face during the stream, but my face just lit up. I'm like, oh my God, are you actually doing this? Are you actually <laughs> making this callback? I loved it so much. I, it was so hard for me to try to keep that excitement in. And uh, it was so good. I loved it. I loved that. Um, and obviously you guys know I'm a huge Pokemon fan. So coming up to, coming up to this campaign, I I did have a little bit, I'm like, I know not everyone here is as big of a Pokemon fan or has as much sort of Pokemon knowledge as I do. Uh, Jack's, Jack's game knowledge is probably better than mine. 
the world knowledge, I, I'd say I'm I'm the top. And I was a little worried. I'm like, ah, oh, what if things aren't sort of faithful? What if what are if these things that I expected to happen because that's sort of established within the canon of the universe, but that doesn't happen, and that hasn't gone. It, it, the DM has just done a great job and I'm loving it so much. The amount of effort she puts in behind the scene, like I, I really wish, I mean, it's a hell of a project, but like credit to anyone that if they want to look into it, but if they were able to establish a, like a, a cartoon of us walking and all the little events that we happen, bloody hell, like it'll be a lot of effort. Like, don't get me wrong, but just behind the scenes, like the old school, like trainer look when you're on your, you know, you're on your Game Boy and you've got grass and TMs and like the amount of things that she's put into it, it's just mm. crazy. It's it's crazy. Yeah, but, yeah. And uh, sorry for those those watching, if you don't know, uh, you guys just get to sort of hear what there is. But uh, us playing, our dungeon master has actually created maps, accurate and to scale maps of everywhere we're going. So if you ever hear us say, oh. Uh, look at that over there. We can actually see that there is something over there on our map if it's within the right line of ice, uh, within the right eyesight. Um, by the way, if you want to see any of those maps, all you need to do is join the Pokemon D and D level membership on the Pokeboy YouTube channel. <laughs> join our Discord, and all of the images are going to be there. On top of that, you will get an NPC named after you, and you can have an input on the Pokemon that that character uses, and even their personality. There are a few other things like a Hunger Games style gift that you can either send to us. So for example, say you're really digging how Cooper's going once a month, send him some first aid kits. Maybe you don't like him. I don't know. Send him a rock and a hate letter. Wow. Uh, but you know what? Wow. Whatever you send, it'll send it with a personal note and it will be read out in the game by our dungeon master. So go take a look. Um, but yeah, the, the maps that we can see... She's just done so well. Um, so uh, Jack's saying, that, yeah, Jack's saying the Viridian Forest one that she's making. It's not on Roll Twenty. Um, the Viridian Forest one that she's making, he said, is just so unbelievably insane. And the way she's talking about it as well, she's saying it's really going to force us to sort of have to work together and cooperate. So that could be a bit of a turning moment. Maybe, uh, maybe the three of us, because we're probably the three. Would we be the three biggest personalities? I don't know how Ver Vergus is a... He's more of an all-over-the-place type of guy. Oh, I think we've definitely got the... <clears throat> I think that you and Cooper are, are holding a lot of decisions as the group. I would probably say yeah. that. I would probably say that Finn... Not so much. I think he'll, he'll come out of his bubble a bit more. Vergus mm -hmm. is very just... Energetic. Chaotic running around just backflipping off trees like if i had this mate in real life i'd be like what is wrong with them like yeah. <laughs> this is something ain't right here but yeah i, I definitely think you and cooper are, I, I feel like there's two two sides at the moment i think vergus is sitting on the fence i don't know where vergus sits but i think it's you and finn it's me and, and it's finn me and cooper it's you and cooper and then vergus is in the middle yeah he's just jumping from side to side yeah, and so it's, if, um, if we had to do it on like a, a graph, you'd have uh, sort of Vault on one side, Cooper on the other. Ugh. Then next to Cooper, you've obviously got Vault the third. Then right in the middle, you'd have uh, you'd have Vergus. But then closer to Vergus, I think, than to me, you would have Finn. And then you'd have yeah, you. And you then you'd have me at the start. <laughs> you said, you said <laughs> oh, did I? Cooper, <laughs> Vault the third. Oh, did <laughs> I? No, I was like, uh, what? <laughs> Jet on one side. Cooper on the other, and that's yeah. sort of the dynamic at the moment, and everyone sort of sits on a spectrum of who they're friendly with in between. Yeah, in between, yeah. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I have like to agree with you. It's, um, I, I think Finn put it, and I, I can't remember if it was Finn or if it was you, but there's definitely a lot of testosterone in the group. Oh yeah, I've said it a, a lot, lot of the last week. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and and I, I, it I makes think sense. That... We're all 18-year-old, and I, I said this on show, I'm like, we're all 18-year-old men. I'm like, wait, no, we're not. We're 18-year-old boys. We're, we're a bunch of... We've been through a lot, but we're just idiot boys. <laughs> and I still laugh at the, the very first line the DM described as all, a week of friendships, and then it comes in and we're just all chaotic, just <laughs> bashing funny. Clutching. <laughs> <laughs> so she really wanted us just to hit the ground running as a just this cohesive group, and instantly, instantly Cooper just starts hating on me. 
Well, I mean, your first comment to Cooper, and to be fair, I understand. The first why thing I said it. to Cooper was, "Hey, how about we have a battle?" <laughs> Literally, that was yeah. I'm pretty sure that was it. it that was sorry. Um, yeah, no, it was like straight off the bat. It was. Um, I think what yeah, Chris is about to say it. I think when you said your goal. You said you want to be the very best. I do think I made it a snarky comment. I think I said, yeah, I'd like to see. Uh, we'll see about that or something. Yeah. It was I like, think yeah. I did make a, a we'll bit see. of a douchey comment. Yeah. yeah and I was no. like, Ooh, okay. Yeah. But, oh, God, I really hope this doesn't turn out it's all my fault. <laughs> <laughs> that one comment. No, the that one comment. comment just ruins everything. No, oh. as I say, with, um, Coop, with Cooper's character, I think he just wants to be like, the strong presence, if that makes mm -hmm. sense. He wants to be a leader. And at the moment, he's seeing Jet as that, you know, very strong, very, yeah, just capable leader. And I, I know, as, as you said in the previous podcast, I'm pretty sure um, that, <clears throat> that the personality seemed to clash a little bit. Yeah. Because we and, even have very yeah. similar skills. Like, you went a charming route as well, didn't you? Like, a uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and high intimidate as well. So, <laughs> oh, I don't have high intimidate. I don't, I've yeah. got nothing in my intimidate. That's still at a two. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, yeah. I mean, now that we can say it off stream as well, I've got high in guile and Pokemon education. So, I mean, yeah. that might might give people a little bit of a hint where I'm going with my character. <laughs> but, um, and I mean, it sounds like you were. It sounds like you're you're part of Team Rocket. For Pokemon education, <laughs> yeah, wouldn't man. I go Guile and Intimidate? Nah, man. They're a Pokemon poaching group, man. They need to have know about them. Uh, yeah. Yeah, right. Okay. I'll give you that. I mean, but that's not where I was going with <laughs> yeah. my conversation then. Um, um, but I mean, <laughs> probably what we can gather from you. I mean, Koopa, let, let's, let's discuss Pokeboy, you right? I would say that he's got high stats in charm. Absolutely. Definitely. It's my number one. It's my number one. Yeah. Yeah, we, yeah. We just said you charm everything. And I would probably say Pokemon, bre oh, sorry, yeah, Pokemon education you definitely have high in because you can't use the breeding feature. Whereas an edge, no, it's a edge. It's you can't an edge, use that on the. T but you need a high Pokemon. You need like a three or a four in Pokemon education. And then I would say that your other, I think matching that would be in combat. I actually, I, I'm bringing it up right now because I am not sure. Uh, I know, I know, charm and Pokemon education are good, but that's about it. Um, well, I'm bringing that up. I'm surprised nobody wanted to go like a cult education. Um, I was tempted on it, but I think because we we didn't have any knowledge about the, the the campaign or like how to play a dnd &D, mm. is very very hard because i looked at all the features and edge i was like that's pretty cool like some of the abilities yep. you get i was like yeah it's pretty cool but yeah i, I think I, I think we all just played it very safe with our character builds but we have a little bit of branching out because there is a lot of people that share similarities like me and you share uh pokemon education you and cooper share charm i believe uh, Vergus is, I think he's on survival, and he's definitely survival and acrobatics. I think. Yeah. yeah. And then Finn is. We actually haven't said. Has Finn rolled for anything apart from? He's uh, he's, he's rolled for charm. You with that? No, uh, he's tried to charm. Has he? Was he successful in charm? Not really. It was. It nah. Was, no. So it was yeah, pretty bad. we haven't really seen his his stats. He's not really given much. Excuse me. Much away from that. It's true. So, uh, so me, uh, my highest is a charm, which is four plus two. Ooh, okay. uh, next wow. is my perception, which is three plus two. Uh, I've then got yep. Pokemon education and combat, which is a three. And then my oh, my stealth and survival are a two plus two each. Oh, so you've got, you've got a double skill in hands. And then, because you can't tell, you get a plus one in Pokemon Education. Uh, so, I've got double skill in hands, yes. Uh, breeder, two basic skills and basic martial art. 
and then just a bunch of features and Pokemon moves. Do we ever find out about Adept? What we're going to do on that aspect? Or is it, I'm, I'm assuming this is a safe assu- assumption there that you would have to have at least basic skills. You can't just go straight into Adept skills, but it does oh, no. say just level two. No, 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 no. So you would need to have the prior to level it up, but I know you've been asking me all week. I'm sorry, because I've been sick. I haven't been able to. <laughs> yeah, right. I will look, um, but I'm pretty sure you need a basic before you can go to Adept. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. Makes sense. Uh, that makes sense. Because I'm like, you could do some real damage with that, like off the bat. Yeah. But I mean, you choose to depth to depth, and then all of a sudden you go from untrained to adept. Yeah. Just I assumed that you'd have to go basic to get to novice, and then novice to yeah. adept. I, I really hope the DM brings because it's something that I've identified like off off character. Charm is very powerful because you get the ability to pretty much charm yep. anyone you want. Yep. And you can charm them into a better result. So it's mm-hmm. extremely overpowered. Um, I think that the other one that we noticed, Pokey Education, as much as I love it, it's given me good stats as well. But it's very overpowered with Pokey Maniac. That's huge for characters well, to identify. Well, but, maybe. It's not like, a, it's not like say, we saw two that... It, say, the Poliwag I found. Say they both had terrible stats. It's not like I could say, shoo, and then hope two more to Mora would appear. Yeah, but I mean, it, 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 identifying you, the ability would be helpful. I think I think it'll be more helpful for things like gym battles and actual I, trainer battles. I think the one thing that I think is overpowered about um, Pokemaniac is the fact that you don't have to catch it to find out what moves, what level, what ability, yeah. like all That's that. True. You're not wasting a Pokeball. You're like, oh, well That's now true. it's got pretty rubbish stats. I'm just not even going to bother. I'm going to battle yeah. it, kill it, get XP. So I think it's overpowered on that. So I hope the DM brings out more scenarios where survivability will come into it acrobatics will yeah. come into it so she's so, going to um we we spoke and because i actually spoke to her directly after that stream and i said look as much as i and like i wanted the number one reason i wanted to play D, whether it was pokemon or regular is i wanted a real charismatic person that could try to sell and barter and just do all this really stupid stuff just by talking his way through things but that shouldn't just be all it is. It, you're right. It's being overused at this point. Um, but we're still finding our thing. Yeah. By three, yeah. four more episodes, we, we won't have a, as many of these teething issues. But she has stated she's going to be adding a lot more things, um, such as player hunger. Uh, we're going to need to have things like survivability. We're going to need to... And, for example, say say uh, for some reason if, uh, if Vault really annoys Cooper and... Or if Volt acts like a bully towards Cooper, based on Cooper's backstory, he's probably just going to cut him off. Um, imagine yeah. if imagine if Volt gets sort of stuck out where we're in the middle of you know we're in, we're in a you know Diglett Cave trying to survive, and you know his tent breaks or is stolen, or you know his his water his water canteen if that gets implemented is gone. What happens if no one gives him lends him any water? I mean, well, he's got he's got cushion. I guess he could he could drink his water's po- his Pokemon's water. I could do that. I've also got Magikarp, which if I have to make a sacrifice, I probably could do pretty easy. I mean, Floppy's not very <clears throat> valuable within my team. Um, wow! But Jesus Christ! I, I, I mean, it's <laughs> I'll, I'll say it, it is, man. It's a level two Magikarp. Like I just looked at Pokédex before. It's not going to evolve to level twenty. That's gonna cost me really? thousands. They're yeah, going by actual minimum for twenty, minimum twenty. So it's gonna take me eighteen levels. So I really don't have a connection to it. Yeah. Uh, you, as you, I think one thing that you saw a little bit of throughout the episode is that when I was upset, I had Cushion cuddling me. Yeah. Um, I've got a very very strong bond with Cushion, and I've told the DM about why I have a strong connection with Cushion yep. and what it represents. Um, but I think that if the group, and I hope this is not the case, but if the group rejects Vault as a, as a member, whoo, he is going to get nasty. He'll become the Meridian 4. Yeah, he, he, he will be, <laughs> yeah, and you'll probably see Vault sway pretty quickly in terms of just wanting to absolutely hurt the team. So I, I don't think that, I, I mean... I said it in the last episode. I'm gonna take a step back as a character and and relax a bit because I'm I'm making some pretty bold enemies pretty quickly. But yeah. I've um 
Uh, me and Cooper, I mean, I'm glad I've got Cooper because yes. Jurgis now just just seemed like to brush me off. Whatever. Finn, Finn came to my aid when I was getting gang banged by retarders. Um, so, I mean, that was nice. And uh, can we just talk about how dodgy you were for coming in and trying to swipe a kill? I'm Poor so glad Cooper. you noticed that's what I was doing. So <laughs> I, 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 I didn't, I want, I didn't want to say it. Um, but I 100% didn't jump in to save you. I'm like, oh, hold on. These guys are getting experience points. So I'm like, Charmander, go. Yeah. <laughs> you get some of those. Because uh, oh. you guys are all read Absol- out. All of- you guys I was are- absolutely dirty as on that. <laughs> uh, all of you guys had read out. And I thought I was actually going to be able to do it twice because all of you had read out your Pokemon speed stat. So I thought I was going to be able to do like a sneak kill on my first one. And then because my Charmander is faster than all of your Pokemon, I was going to go in and try to hit that second, that last one as well, and try to finish it off. But Amy didn't let me. Do you know one thing that I noticed uh, after game, and I'm spewing that I only just found out. I put down, I've got a, I've got a feature right where I get to use one move once in a battle, and it's not my turn. I can literally hit twice. Oh. And I am spewing because I'm like, oh well, I could have at least. Because Cooper hit, Cooper hit one and lowered it pretty much low. Finn went second, lowered the second one. So technically I had the ability to kill two right then and there. Yep. And then there would have been one left, which I was fine. I got two in the, uh, in the end anyway, but yeah. I, I mean, now that, I th- now that I've noticed it, I'm like, ooh, I could do some things in battles. Yes, this is good. <laughs> yeah. This is very good. So, but I, yeah, I was just like, you sneaky little rat. Like, as if you're jumping in to get some XP. <laughs> I was so dirty then. And yeah. for, like, now that I can I can broadcast it a little bit there, quite literally, as I was saying to you on stream and stuff like this, I wanted the ability to have a battle with an actual Pokemon, not not actually battle, but, like, trying to attempt to catch yep. because my story was going to come out a little bit more. I was going to yeah. tease it a little bit, but... I'm spewing. I, I literally just rolled a four, and then I just got three of them all just jumping on me. Yeah. I'm like, damn, I can't do it. Like, <laughs> it's just not my luck. So I have to postpone. Like, and that's the really annoying thing because I'm like, well, you know, maybe then people will lay off my case a bit if they knew about it. But well, what and if I was... you had have just sort of quickly thrown out three Pokeballs, tried to catch three Radita? I, no, in my life, that game, no way. They would have all broken out and just <laughs> eaten me. Like, <laughs> there's no way. But Dude, imagine the, if you actually got bit by one of them and ended up with, like, tetanus or something. <laughs> <laughs> you, ended up with, you ended up with, like, pokey rabies. <laughs> but the one thing that I was worried about is that when I went to attempt to catch, the one thing that you said was, uh, Jet is watching and i was just like no don't watch i don't want you to know my story so i'm like i'm I'm half glad because i don't i don't want it to come to the group's attention straight away like yep. and that's the thing that i i i watched back the, the stream and i also noticed it i mean we we didn't get to see your facial expressions the first one but i wish i did because when you release or when you um sent out lavatar and i'm like uh, Volt notices that Lavitar is now in, in, in uh, Jet's possession. I heard you go, oh, like you were like, oh damn, I shouldn't have done that. Uh, you dug the the uh, the polywag. Yeah. So and and I think that if if it was the thing that you were going for, if you kept Lavitar a secret, ooh, you could have done some damage. Yeah, imagine if that had have come out. You know, you didn't realize until I had a Tyranitar or something. <laughs> Yeah, we would have been in trouble. Like Cooper might have uh, jumped into battle with you, and then all of a sudden there's this Tyranitar in there. Yeah, and you're like, oh. he sends out his Arbok, and I'm like, oh, cool, Tyranitar. Tyranitar. <laughs> 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 Arbok uh, <yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Um So part of, I I have hinted at a little bit of my backstory or a little bit of motivation. Unfortunately, I don't think anyone picked up on it, and it's like the main. It was in session one. And it was like the main thing that everyone thinks I'm a bully for now. I'm not going to go into it, but I have, uh, there there was a part out of those two sessions where Jet started to act what I would call out of character. Um, And there are definitely some hints. I'm going to go back and watch the specific bit because I have an idea about what scenario you're talking about. Oh, too bad episode one isn't up. 
Oh, damn, it's not. No. No. Damn. All right, well, <laughs> man, I'll discuss it now then. It's definitely the Halley situation, Cooper. They said something during then because Dennis, he threatened, and that was it. I didn't was threaten Dennis. You did. <laughs> what? Yeah, how, you how did you threaten Dennis? That, that Your needs to words, stop. and it's not on recording, so I, I can say it how it is. Your words were, well, Dennis, you can either give me what I want, or I mean, I've got high combat. Do you really want to go down that path? That is not what I said. That's a threat. That is a threat. Yes. Oh, I reckon it was close to it. <laughs> You're like, I could physically harm you. <laughs> did I actually? <laughs> yes. There's no way I did like, that. I'm sure. I swear, bro. I swear. I was just like, oh my wow, god. Am I actually the bad character? Oh, uh, I mean, from looking at all the characters. Oh, if you had a looked at that um, episode zero. Yeah, possibly. <laughs> <laughs> might have people. People might have a different view, but oh no. Yeah. Wait, you've oh, still no. got the recording on just yourself, don't you? I uh, know it's. Oh, actually, it might be in my uh, bin. But... So I mean, you would have the recording, and you can listen to like that particular bit. Yeah. What words you said? If that one, does so... sort of sound. That does. Oh no, that wasn't. No, no. no. So I know what you. I know what you're saying. I did say I'm. Uh, I, I did say I was a martial artist, and I've got and I've strong combat skills. But that was when he was saying. How do I know you're you're physically capable of you know lugging around all these boxes? Because it's when I was offering to help him uh, restock all of the items um, and un unpackage all the boxes because that was part of my bartering. I'm like, look, pass it for us cheaper, and I'll help you around the store. Uh, you look like you're obviously understaffed. You got all these boxes that need to be undone. And then Dennis is all like, you know, how do I know you can actually do this? And I'm like, look, I'm a martial artist. I've got a trained body. Blah 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 blah. All this. So I didn't threaten him. I was just letting him know if it came out as a threat, it did not mean to. There was all. a comment in there. There was a comment in there where it sounded like you were threatening the shopkeeper. Because I remember, was, I remember all looking at everyone. We're all like, "Who's threatening the shopkeeper on episode one?" Yeah. Bro? Like he's gonna play an absolutely aggressive. Character. I'm pretty sure there was one like, line what? you did actually kind of threaten Dennis. Oh no, I didn't mean to. And yeah, I can't. Oh, was it after the sponsorship thing, or I can't remember exactly? But yeah, I'm pretty sure there was one line you said, and we were all just like, "Oh my god!" Oh yeah, we were really <laughs> shocked. Wow, I can't geez. exactly yeah. fully remember what you said. I mean, but, I might yeah. need to go take a look. I might need to go take a look because um, I did not mean to in the slightest. But I feel in the Halley situation, Cooper, okay, do you remember much of the Halley situation? Why was he abusing? Like, why he was having a crack at air? Yeah, let's not say abusing. I, um, I came on a little strong. Well, I mean, the because DM... his because um, Jet was trying to find out why she was standing at the front of the boarded gym that uh, Team Rocket had um. Vacated. Oh, Team Rocket or Nebula? Nah, Team, Team Rocket. Rocket. Team, Team Rocket. Rocket. Yeah, had vacated, and it, yeah, it was a bit suspicious. Maybe. I believe. Maybe, maybe. Bear with me here. Maybe. Jet wants to become a gym leader in Viridian. Maybe he wants to take over the gym. Okay. Yo, gym. maybe as and of right now, that is my goal. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> well, no, see, the, the reason... Uh, I'm confused about sort of the time that's going on because right now, Blue should be the gym leader. Blue should be the gym leader of Viridian City, but oh. Professor Roke said he's back in Pallet Town... So I'm, I'm a little confused. And she said that the Pokemon Inspection Agency, uh, is, so the PIA, they are considering whether they're going to shut down the Brilliant City Gym altogether. I mean, that might be your goal. I mean, also, that's something that you brought up. It's a very good point. Why don't we start in Pallet Town? Yeah. Well, we also had the option, instead of going north, we could have gone south towards Pallet Town, but we didn't. Probably a good... Pardon? Did we have that ability? I thought we Nothing. only had... No, no, no. We could have gone Nothing west. Could have this. We could, yeah, we could have gone west towards the Indigo Plateau, but that's where Nurse Joy was stopping us. We could have gone north towards Viridian, uh, Viridian Forest and Pewter City, or south for Pallet Town. Damn, I'm spewing now. That's really not good. We should have had the ability... I mean, that's probably crucial information we might have missed out on. Could have played a massive role on... Well, that's on, on us. We need, to have, we need to have knowledge on what we're doing. Yeah, I think the other thing that is uh, making the game go a lot longer than, than normal is like we're all venturing and we all have to take turns. So I hope they implement like as I was telling you on stream, like something like 
group battles. We, we're all, yeah, or group battles or group, you know, Pokemon. We, we roll. Like, same as, I mean, off stream, we can say it. Same as, like, when we roll for starts. Highest, lowest, medium, whatever. Yeah, we just, we all roll, roll a D20. Say five Pokemon jump out as a horde. We roll a D20. Whoever gets the highest says, that's my Pokemon that I'm going to be battling yep. and trying to catch. Yep. I'd be down with and that. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. And, that's a great idea, actually. And yeah. I think to, to make it, like, fair and not, like, because obviously if you have, like, not saying this is a possibility, a Charmander and four Pidgeys jump out, who do you think the first person's going to pick, right? Obviously Charmander. So I think to make it in all fairness, make them as silhouettes or, like, shaking bushes. You know, like, you don't have to say that, oh, yeah, I can see a silhouette of Charmander or Lavatar mm -hmm. or whatever, right? You can say there's five bushes, um, one of them has a level six, one of them has a seven, one has a nine, two has ten. You know, which one do you want to pick? And you don't have an opportunity, you don't know, it's a mystery. And I think then it would be a lot quicker rather than, yeah. you know, we one encounter, go. two encounters. Like, I think it's just, it's yeah. a mystery. And that makes it harder for us as characters because we're not going to be nitpicking. Yeah. Like, you can't Ooh. nitpick a situation and go, all right, well, I'm going to charm the person in the thing or i'm gonna lie to the person in the thing you, you don't have an opportunity because it's completely mystery we don't know dm controls it what's so up from running a pokemaniac or a perception check i mean that's that's a good opportunity but once again you've got to roll high first you, yeah, you can't pick until fair. you and you get high so you can use a perception check but if you're last you're stuck you haven't got an opportunity to look unless you and finn like you know finn gets highest and you go I'll roll a perception check for you. Like, I'll help you out. Mm. So I think little things like this, you could see, will we'll speed up the process a bit. And I yeah. think that once we got our bearings and yeah, <laughs> once we got back into it and we you know, brushed the dust off, we were a lot quicker. But I, I would love to... Um, one thing that I, I do want to bring up. So we're at the Poke Center. Why did you get your def Pokemon to defend you while you slept? Uh, cause I don't trust Cooper or Volt. Wow. Okay. Did, did, did the DM ever say how close yeah. we were to your room? No. no. Okay. But what, okay, what, what, what actually scared me is, uh, before we played the session, and I'm not sure if you guys checked roll 20 before we started to play, but it had, uh, Jet and Cooper sharing a bedroom. I saw that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah like, I did yeah. that. <laughs> And I'm like, ooh, <laughs> this... I don't know how this is going to go. Um, I'm kind of glad. <laughs> but, but yeah, the, the reason was, first, I wanted to try breeding. Um, but second, I yeah, I, I wanted to make sure that I was away so, from everyone else. No to metagaming, but what made you not trust me and Cooper off the bat? Because I, I didn't hurt or impact your character last session. I came up... The only interaction I had before you went to bed was with Finn and I offered him a magic card. I wasn't abusive to you or anything. So I, I was just like, wow, okay. You've very clearly showed that you're not trustworthy me. Yeah. But I so, hadn't done anything at that point. So Cooper was clear. He and I just weren't, didn't seem to be getting along. Uh, it, something did happen with us in the first session. The only thing I that pushed you in the, the first... Pokemart. Yeah. And, like and... I pushed you away because you were getting a bit too. And you apologized for it at the, the lake. You said, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have pushed you here. Yeah. I have the opportunity to catch a magic card. The only other interaction that we had, actually, we didn't even have. I think the only thing that you you were like, what are you doing? Is that I shoved Cooper into Halley. And you you lied to Officer Jenny about Vergus. Oh, no, you didn't lie, but you snitched oh, on him. I didn't lie, but I snitched on him. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, you could, see, you could say that. I mean, yeah. because, like, obviously, literally just before... I was talking to Vergus about how I wasn't the one who snitched. It was you that snitched. And I'm like, hold on, you weren't there. So you don't know that. You weren't aware of it. Because I was just like, bro, like, and I think Cooper was just like, oh, you know, maybe I could, you said it in the last session, Cooper could turn around and go, oh, I just want to poison sting him. And I'm like, bro, he is protecting himself. Like, he has some inner protection issues. Like, <laughs> this man, he's going to have, like, a lava type stand at the door, like, who wants to come through? <laughs> <laughs> but, no, I just thought it was, and I, I think that's probably why I was trying to get a bit more information, because I'm like, someone hide out a private room. Who is it? And Nurse Joy, like, I even gave her a tip, and she still wouldn't tell me who it is. So I'm like, mm. 
Let me find out. Let me find out. So I'm very interested to see if uh, if uh, Jet is just untrustworthy in general. Like I think that you'll share with Finn that you and Finn are, are quickly established a bond together. Yeah. Burgess, I think, is just kind of outcasting. He doesn't really have like you and Finn, or he hasn't got me and Cooper. Yeah. Um, he's just too busy drinking super potions to to know what's going on or what's up and what's down. So, <laughs> but. I, yeah, I, and the other thing, the other thing that I noticed and something I wrote down was, did you hear how Virgus said, but there might be more to my story? Did you hear that? Yes, I did. And I was just like, whoa, okay. Yeah. There's something we haven't touched on. Mm. Not uh, not as curious as the, the other offhand comment made by our, our, fellow, our fellow speaker, Mr. Coops here. Do you remember what he said? No, what do you say? No, uh, he after he saw something, he's like, "Oh, this will be a, <laughs> this will be interesting to report back, or this uh, someone will be interested in this information." <laughs> so, like, who who are you working for, man? Who's uh... a? Wasn't that the Lavatar uh, comment? Because yeah, I, been, I think it was yeah. Lavatar. Yeah. Uh, yeah. no. I, I think it was just not... an offhand comment by yourself. Yeah. I don't think it actually meant anything. Yeah, um... no, it didn't mean a hell of a lot to be honest, but. <laughs> <laughs> but it's interesting information. Interesting information. Oh, he doesn't want to elaborate <laughs> on that one. Well, maybe he's got. Maybe he's going to incorporate it now. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. He's that's just the... a bit of wait and see. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the other thing I'm loving about the campaign is that we're not set on our story. Like we don't have to. Like you, your story is that you know you want to be the best of the best, but you know you keep Cooper like. You know, things like this, you, you don't have to stick with your story. You don't have to do the story based on what you originally said mm. it as. And I love the fact that it's ever molding. Like, I love it. Love it. Yep. So, but yeah, there was a lot of comments mm. last session that were just mm. Mm, curious. Curious. But once again, Finn's the only one who doesn't, doesn't have anything. He's just a little guy, just the innocent guy. Yeah, you keep I'm saying that. Sus. Just a little guy. I'm hella sus. I'll tell you straight yeah. up. I'll tell you straight up. And when he double crosses you, which, I mean, I might just be speculating here, but if he double crosses you, don't come running over to Cooper and Vault because we'll be like, we warned you. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. I'm a bit worried. I'm a bit scared of Fergus and Vault. Uh, sorry, Fergus and uh, Finn, actually, because I don't know. Fit like Fergus, he's a very quirky character, but I have a feeling he might have some very, very strong moves in his abattoir. Mm -hmm. And Finn, well, he comes across friendly, but he's been very, very quiet and to himself in in all the episodes so far. So it's going to be interesting to see their development later on. But yeah, I'm definitely curious about him. That's for sure. Has it hasn't Fergus got like? Sleep powder, like poison powder. Yeah, because he threatened his... Jet with them. Well, no, he threatened me with them. He threatened and that's why I was just like, whoa, did you just threaten me? Like, because I was just like, all right, let's go. You want a repeat of the first session? Let's yeah, go. Yeah, I, I I'll was. I'll just uh, surge you out. Let's go. And I, then he was every... just like, no, 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 I wasn't threatening you. I'm like, well, I'm going to take note that you threatened me. So, <laughs> so none uh, of us can actually remember him threatening you. I've spoken with Emily, I spoke with, uh, with Jack. None of us, and I'm and with Sam, and I'm like, guys, do you actually remember him being threatened and all? And none of us can actually recall him threatening you in any way. I'm pretty sure his comments were, "My Pokemon know the ability to damage, oh sorry, to poison or to sleep," and I was just like, "Whoa, are you threatening to poison me, bro? Like, what the hell?" Because I can't remember what it was. It, I he he found a med kit, yep. and then I said, "You're damaged. Use mine." Like, I don't need a med kit. I appreciate the fact that you said you're going to give one to the group, but how about you use mine? And he's like, I'll use my own. Like, I wasn't going to give you one anyway. And I was just like, <laughs> whoa, okay. And then I came, I, I'm pretty sure that was after I came clean and said, hey, look, I dogged uh, Jet and said, yeah, I he was the one that dogged you in. I was the one who, who said it. But he didn't give me a time to elaborate why I did it. But I was just like, whatever, we'll move past that. But then it, it, it was something that he said, and I'm like, whoop. I'm going to take that as a threat. But I'm pretty sure it was him talking about how he's oddly sure he has the ability to poison or sleep. And I was just like, whoa, you want to go? Let's mm. go. <laughs> like, 
I'll take you. I'll take yeah. you. <laughs> yeah, it, it took everything Jet had not to not to fight back when he threatened me in the Pokemon Center before we left. Who? Uh, Virgus. He came up to me when he's like a uh, because he was questioning me about when you tried to blame me being the one that snitched on him to <laughs> Officer <laughs> Jenny. And he was trying to get me to sound like, look, dude, I'm not going to play along with these games. I, why would I do it if I cleared up your mistake or this? I'm not going to, I'm not going to go off and say this person did it. Cause I haven't got any proof. Um, <clears throat> and then he's like, oh, all right, all right. I, I guess I can sort of trust you. But then he went on saying my Pokemon know these damaging moves. Oh no. He goes, I know these damaging moves like poison powder and stuff. And I'm like, oh. I'm just lay him out jet. We're in a Pokemon <laughs> center. He can get help. Just, just knock him out. Just double kick him. <laughs> double kick. No, he, I mean, yeah, he was a bit more, bit more feisty this one. He, he, like the first session, just bubbly, just moving around. But like, I think uh, DM said it straight off the bat. Have you noticed the voice change from first yeah. session to second? <laughs> like, he's, uh, he's much less um, cliche, clichédy, uh, clichédy. That's not the right word. He's a lot less flamboyant, stereotypically flamboyant. <laughs> But, I mean, that's the thing. Like, I was just like, I can't remember what he says, but now I'm going to go back and watch it because I'll, I'll point it out and I'll be like, are you kidding? This is why I saw it as a threat. Or I might have just misheard it as not a threat. But, hey, Vault, I noted it down in my notes that Vault took it as a threat. And I was very, very tempted at that point to just start fucking on Vegas, Like, focusing on a way to attempt to just get him to, like, trip up an acrobatics attempt. <laughs> like how can I how can I do that? Like we'll battle him. Like I could have battled him, but that would have been a very interesting fight once again because I've got mm -hmm. he's got two grass. I've got one water. Um, uh, lightning or oh, sorry, um, electricity is not effective against. Or is it is it neutral? I can't remember. Towards against, what? Uh, grass. Neutral. So it wouldn't have done anything. Whereas he's got super effective against two of my Pokemon. Mm -hmm. So it would have been uh, a different battle <laughs> than it was the first one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely would have been. Uh, yeah, and then I guess we we then moved into Route 2? Yes. I think it's Route 2. two. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, but we got to finally, after like two and a half hours of really doing nothing, get our encounters. So I wouldn't say it was nothing. There was a no, lot it of wasn't content nothing. in there. There was a lot of content in there. <laughs> Uh, but it was good. I was uh, I was I was very impressed with what I found right away. Uh, the two polywag, the the pair, the male and female polywag. Um, By the way, what did you find at Viridian? You found the TM because you rock smash. Oh yeah, yeah. So I found the an item ball with twenty bait. Oh. Yeah, which was good because I was uh, I was gonna go back to Dennis and buy some date date bait date. because uh, Emily changed the rule about bait with rods, so. And I, I'm kind of spewing that we didn't go back to the, the Pokemon and, and pick up some items. She gave us plenty of opportunity. She kept like, hey, telling well, us to go back. Like, you sure? You sure? And we're like, no, nah, no, nah, don't worry about it. We'll be right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. Uh, I feel like I feel like Cooper probably should have picked up a, a first aid kit or two. Ah, oh, hundred percent. I'm kind of yeah, regret not going back now. <laughs> uh, I mean, Vergus, Vergus still has some. Vergus has got four of them. So yeah, and Vergus hasn't got anything against Cooper. No, nah. 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 and he did offer to. Uh, yeah, Buggy we... offered us all to um, mm. if we needed it that we could borrow one. So you yeah. reckon in session three we're gonna go straight to bed? Because Cooper can heal from asleep, Connie. No, we're still in the far. We're still in route two. Cooper's got a tent, yeah. though. It depends on what time of day it is. Cooper might just... Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's up to the DM with that <laughs> one. <laughs> I mean, Finn can pretty much fall asleep on the spot, so I'm sure you could pop up and down and have a snooze. Like, uh, but no, I mean, the, it was cool. I can't, was it you that rolled Perception Check and then everyone else got yep. to notice? You, you let us know? Yeah, because um, everyone else wrote, rolled a lower Perception than me, so I, I decided just to tell everyone what, what I could see. Because there was... Nidoran male, Caterpie, Spiro, Ekans, Retarda, and Centric. And Nidoran female. And, oh, Sandshrew. That was one thing that we didn't find out until... Finn. We didn't find out the Sandshrew uh, or the or the Polywag in the Perception check, so I think I rolled a 14, so it wasn't a perfect roll. Yeah, it wasn't um, perfect. But it was enough to find out it was around, man. Uh, 
very glad though i was able to and i didn't want to try to charm this pokemon so obviously starting out trying to get the the polywag i didn't actually want to charm it because i'm like this is going to be boring for everyone if i just do the same thing but the problem is i had ground and fire types with charmander and lavatar if i had gone into battle against those polywag i would have been like two shot <laughs> so i'm like crap i'm gonna have to try to do this uh <laughs> might not be as thrilling but that's the only way we're gonna get it so i mean you and finn had that alliance though so i'm assuming that finn probably would have jumped in yeah yeah finn probably would have jumped in to help um but that was good i good so you ended up catching the female polywag which name reveal we have named peaches peaches the polywag uh no no you leave peaches alone hey uh, serge is hungry <laughs> serge is hungry <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah i guess we are at the that's the sort of big conflict that happens this match the sort of uh <laughs> the, oh my god did that just happen Cooper, would you, would you yeah. like to tell us about it buddy uh so in the obviously Cooper was lurking around and in the distance he saw that uh, uh, Jet had the chance to catch two Poliwag on his own and I don't think Cooper really liked that idea that he was going to catch a Pokemon so he decided to uh, try and run in between them and try and scare the Poliwag off but had absolutely no luck so <laughs> uh, he felt he took the he started running towards him and uh, rolled really low and intimidate and I fell over, <laughs> which is kind of embarrassing. <laughs> Got a bit of grace, so uh, that was all right. And then Silly silly Cooper didn't take the lesson and um, tried again. <laughs> and yeah, well, the rest is history, I guess. Yeah, uh, yeah so uh, Cooper, Cooper decided to run again and Jet was going to use this time to try to Try to act chivalrous in the last attempt to convince this polywag to join him. Uh, and Jet attacked Cooper. Used used a move on Cooper. He used low sweep. And it dealt some pretty crazy damage. Like, for a low sweep. 100%. For a low sweep, man. Uh, Chris, uh, Chris, do you have how much damage it, it dealt? Is it in the, the roll? I'm just Did looking now. Roll? Yeah, I'm just looking now. Because it, it took a bit of HP off yeah, you, It man. took a bit, yeah. Well, I definitely gained two injuries, um, and I think it was, yeah, I can't remember exactly, it was like in the 30s or something, wasn't it? Oh yeah, your your health dropped down to like yeah. 30. Like, no, you, you, did, you did 24 damage, but his defense after it all, you did 18, 18 yeah. damage to him. So yeah, that's about right, you would have dropped down to like yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. 33, 30 34 yeah. or something. And then, which is not. And then, uh, and then, Jet, what did you attempt to do to Cooper once he was on the ground after <laughs> sustaining a so, low sweep? Two things. <laughs> I, I made I made a bit of a joke to my to myself, not not to Cooper. I did make a joke saying that I was going to finish it, uh, and I was just going to sort of stomp on Cooper. Uh, I didn't. I didn't. <laughs> but it, it was going to be like it was going to be. <laughs> it was going to be like a throat stomp, and I was just going to be like, get this guy out of my way. But I didn't. I did. Holy. Yeah, I know, right? I was upset, man. You, my. Yeah. Upset. Uh, uh, the, um, I was gonna actually ask you, how come you went for a low sweep and not a high kick or something yeah. like that? Yeah. Because so, you're running. Yeah, you were running at me, so I knew that even if I, which I did, I got a low accuracy because you were running at me, and then all I had to do was sort of like trip you up, and then trip you would down. fall on top yeah. of yourself. Um, yeah, no, that's fair. Yeah. Uh, but no, that that was it. So I, after that, I reached out my hand and offered to help Cooper <laughs> back up. And I'm like, look, man, I am so sorry. I have no idea what I did to offend you. <laughs> but if I have done something to offend you, I sincerely apologize. I hope, I hope we can put this behind us. And that was met with my hand just getting slapped away. <laughs> and so, so I, I turned my back in just utter disrespect and walked away from him uh, and and that's when volt came up and and helped him helped him to his helped him to his feet and hobbled thank you away. Volt. <laughs> i got really you, bro. Don't appreciate that. <laughs> and, <laughs> really and we hobbled, hey we hobbled into your encounter together and yeah just, oh, 
I managed to steal your kill, but hey, look. <laughs> uh, I think Cooper definitely learned a lesson there with Jet. Um, yeah, he's definitely going to have to back down a little bit, otherwise he's going to, you know, suffer a lot of injuries and, you know, that's not what this is exactly needed right now, two days into the uh, <laughs> campaign, you know? <laughs> so, yeah. Well, yeah. I think just as much, I think Jet's going to have to make sure this doesn't go to his head. I think Jet's going to make sure that this isn't sort of like, a, oh, hold on, I can do whatever I want if I can overpower people. So I hope, I don't think it will, I hope this doesn't become a recurring trend for Jet. Yeah. Not not within the Viridian 5, anyway. Oh, it's such a cool name. I know, I love it so <laughs> it much. It is a wicked name. It's got a nice ring. Uh, but yeah, no, he, he just slapped you, which is... um. I mean, fair enough. If you just got kicked too, I wouldn't exactly want to just be picked up by the dude that's kicked me. So, <laughs> but I think that by you doing that, I think that you just grew mine and Cooper's like bond. Like he accepted me, uh, same as how Finn accepted your ability to catch a polywag. That Cooper yeah. accepted yeah. my hand and then accepted my help to get his encounter. So, I think that that was a very that there might be playing it. A big role in that might have a long future. yeah that yeah, might have a so long-standing <laughs> sort of play out man detriment on the group but i mean yeah. hey look the dm might turn around tomorrow and be like cooper and vault hey sorry cooper and jet you're stuck in a cave like work your crap out <laughs> yeah mean, that would be interesting that would be very interesting <laughs> yeah yeah it would especially because i feel like if cooper and jet could get on the same page and work together i think they could be just as i think they'd be a super powerful force together like <clears throat> if they could work together if but i mean that i think I don't know, i'm not speaking for you cooper but i think jet has established himself as a bully now in cooper's eyes what did you say what would you say cooper do you reckon he's been a bully to you or uh, not? look it, it's it kind of goes both ways really like you could he, one person could see it as cooper trying to just be an asshole to jet and the other perspective is jet is actually a bully <laughs> and <laughs> and maybe cooper is right but at the moment with everything you well you'd have to say with this situation cooper probably did the wrong thing but yeah i don't know it's a bit of a on the fence really i respect that maturity man yeah so hmm. i think uh i think cooper's I'm gonna have poison to... him a little bit i think yeah, <laughs> i think uh cooper's gonna need to be careful of vault the third over the next session or two I think Bolt's going to try to use this oh. to his advantage. I think Bolt is going to start to... Maybe if we start to mend our relationship, Bolt will start to remind you of things that happened, or maybe Bolt will say things that didn't happen. I don't think Bolt wants us becoming friends. Ah, you think I'm the poison poison uh, well, little barb in your side, huh? Mm -hmm. Dude, right. I'm not a religious <laughs> man, but you're the snake in the Garden of Eden. <laughs> no, I, I'm... I am reminding Cooper, like, we we have a bond. I haven't turned, I mean, you might see in session three that I turn around and be like, as if he even kicked you, like, why would he do that? But I think Cooper's already established he was a bully off the bat. Cooper on his own accord ran over to intimidate your uh, polywag, did he not? Did I impact with that? Maybe. How? I don't know. <laughs> not in the episode. Uh, I don't know what you guys episode, spoke about. There while, was no I don't impact. know what you guys spoke about while you were in the in bed together. <laughs> in bed together. <laughs> in, in, my, in, 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 Jet, in Jet's mind, <laughs> you, you two were sharing a bed. <laughs> <laughs> Does that mean Vegas and Finn were too? Uh, well, can't. That that's why Finn's so. That's why Finn's so tired. So, <laughs> <laughs> so Vegas has gone sleep powder. <laughs> Just made him good at sleep. You don't remember anything. Oh, that's <laughs> scary. Yeah. Yeah, no, you need to be very careful of yeah. <laughs> That's real scary, man. He could rob anything. Mm. He could steal your Pokemon. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the other thing that, you know, Cooper could have done throughout the episode. He could have attempted to steal your Pokemon as well. Your Pokemon I don't think he, very... nah, he won't do that. No. Nah. It goes against his very character. He won't do that. I guarantee you won't. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. 
Guarantee. Guarantee okay. it one hundred percent. Wow. Okay. Yeah. What about Vergas? I think as long as you don't get on Vergas's bad side, you're gonna be fine with him. Uh... Whereas I think everyone except for you, if you were on their good side, you'd be fine. <coughs> I honestly think that at the moment you're just super side, chaotic and <laughs> yeah. I, I'm very irrational is, is a good way to put it. I'm very irrational, but I've done good by people that are good to me. Like I've, I've helped Cooper and I don't think that I, I think you're a bit assumptive that I'm going to be a poison in, in Cooper's side. But you know, things like I'm going to try and help Cooper. Like I, I went over in Pokemania for him. I even offered to do that with Finn. Finn didn't accept my offer, but I... I yeah, he I'm shunned you twice. Yeah, yeah, correct. I don't think I'm a hindrance. I just think that the people that are treating me right are the people that get You're my not abilities. Hindrance. You're not a hindrance. I mean, I hope not. I mean, <laughs> that's good for to decide. Nothing to do with me, but I, I don't... I don't think I'm being toxic with Cooper. The only thing that I manipulated in that, and, and I would say the word manipulation... Um, was in the room in the morning, mm. in the morning, mm -mm. in the morning. Yeah, in the morning because Cooper had what? What did we say? I was talking to him. Oh no, no, no! Sorry, early. Morning, it was up. It was say. after the time he came back from my room. Yeah, for knocking at the door, and I yeah. talked to Cooper about it, and I was just like, yeah. he's being really sus. Like that was me manipulating it in, in some way to Cooper to go. Well, hold on a second, like. Why is he being ho so hostile about knocking at the door? Like, and why, you know, like, uh, you turned on the lights, didn't you? So I couldn't even see, like, Charmander's yeah. flame or anything, so. Oh, I didn't even think of that, that if the light had stayed off, you would have seen the Charmander flame. But I've already known you have a Charmander. I didn't know at that but point. But you wouldn't you have known he was out waiting, though. Yeah. That's true, that's true. No, that's a fair point. Yep. Mm. So, I and mean, these little things, and that's the thing, like, I, I think that everyone is really going to have the people that they're buddy buddy with, and I and I hope that Volt and and Cooper do have a working friendship. But I think Cooper is and, and not to spoil things. I think Cooper is going to be the first person that finds out about my goals. Oh, guaranteed. Yeah, yeah, guaranteed. Yeah. Um, and even with us being so not on great terms uh i think i still think after cooper jet is probably the next person you would be closest with i don't like finn like yeah in game in Vol take Vol that Vol sam <laughs> <laughs> no. do you want a low sweep too no <laughs> um no like i think Finn, I'm just, I'm super sus on. Vergus dropped really quickly when he supposedly threatened me. Um, I, I do think that me and you have something there, but you're not willing to accept it. Like, I thanked everyone for helping me with Rotata, and you just turned your back on me. So I was just yeah. Like, yeah, bold See, move. Yeah. That, yeah, there, there are a few few decisions I regret. Um, because the a few of those decisions, like, uh purposefully calling out my charmander and be like hey watch how this guy battles yeah um, no, very, very yeah toxic. Very and then just toxic. sort of and then me and charmander literally just sit back in the grass to watch you get swarmed by radita um no, and then no, no, walking that wasn't up then. it wasn't then that was me versus the polywags no no so when you got so when i pulled out charmander i'm like watch how they battle that was against you on poly that was when you were going up against the polywags no uh, that, that was, was when i that was when I was in, in yeah, when I encountered Polywags, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, sorry. He so chime in and said that, yeah. Yeah, yeah so I, I think I said, watch how these guys battle. Um, yeah. And then when you got swarmed by the Radita, I said, uh, I, I sit back down in the grass and just watch. It was either that or, like, you just watch carefully or something like that. Like, you didn't do yeah. anything about that. Nah. But, I mean, hey... <laughs> Thank you for watching me because I slayed two polywags and got the title. You Pokestar. slayed one polywag. Two. One. The no, other one you ran got away. Both. Oh, you got yeah. Both. No. One you got ran both. away. No, the other one. The other one. one yeah, because I tried to catch it. Remember? Oh, it got right. enraged. And then uh, it got enraged. Got yeah, in. yeah. Well, I mean, I slapped that and then two retardies. So I got the Pokeboy Slayer title. So watch out. Watch out. My, mm. uh, my, my Surge is a little beast. 
My cushion. We'll get there. We'll get there. Mm. But the, I mean, the other thing that we haven't talked about is, hey, I threatened you with a two v one battle. You did, and I called you a coward for it too. You, you yeah, said, things got heated oh, between us, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, you were like, "You're not big game. What are you talking about?" Because I remember mm. I literally wrote down, "Pokeboy boy said that he was the big game." <laughs> and I was like, "Yeah, the big game." Like uh, that would have been interesting, but off off camera, I mean, Finn already did turn around and say that if that was the encounter, then it would have been a two v two. Um, oh, did he? Would have been. Yeah, I mean, yeah. He, he turned around and said he would have jumped in for you. My man. Yeah. yeah. And that would have been a very interesting, because at that point, I can't remember if you'd already caught a polywag. I think you might have. Yeah, I had. Um, but sorry, I wouldn't have I mean, used it. No. Nah, and that's the thing that I was working, like, in my head, I'm like, I'm working it out. I'm like, you got Lava Tar and Charmander. Cushion can take care. And then Surge can take care of your polywag. So I've got you covered. Koopa's going to have to worry about the other one, because I can't 2v, 2v1. No way. Mm. But... The the problem would have been, what if I decided to just to run over and just start beating on you? I mean, I've got I've got my moves that I... You haven't seen all my features yet, so... Oh, that's true, I haven't. Yeah, yep, and I could get my Pokemon to attack you. I, I don't even need to attack your Pokemon. Mm -hmm. So keep in mind that, you know, I've got a, a huge power cushion. <laughs> it's going to do some damage. going to do some damage. But, I mean, this is the thing. Like, I... I I really hope it doesn't get to the point where we start Me using too. Pokemon to beat each other up. But, I mean, yeah, I, I, was a, I was a bit shocked at the end when you turned your back because I was like, maybe this is the breaking ice. Maybe this is where we start yeah. to rekindle a little. And then you're like, turn around. I'm like, oh, wow. Yeah, I, okay. I, I, I definitely felt <laughs> that I was get like, me, my emotions were getting sort of heated towards the end. I was starting to get a little into it. Because um, <laughs> after I've cooled down, I'm like, oh, I, I could have, I really could have just sort of made things better. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. The, the other thing that, like, I, I was talking to Cooper off stream about it. The other thing that was really, really hard is that, like, when these little things was happening, like, for example, when I told Burgess that you were the one that snitched him out, we couldn't see your emotion. So I'm sitting there going, like, fuck, is he angry at me? Like, is, is he pissed off? Like, in real life? Like, have I dogged him? Like, is he worried that I'm going to, like, hurt his reputation? Like, Jesus. And then I was just like, it's really hard. And then when I saw the video, I'm like, okay, man. You know, he was just like, oh, like, how dare you do that? Like, kind of I kept forgetting the entire time you could, oh, fuck. Just real quick. I need to touch on when I stood up to do, like, a Superman punch on the <laughs> Yes. <laughs> I regret I didn't have oh. my camera up in front of me, so I, I had roll 20 up, so I couldn't see. What I was like, and I'm, I'm out of camera. All you can see is sort of like from like my nipples to my <laughs> uh, from from nipples to belly button. Oh, oh my god, this, this is so cringy. <laughs> <laughs> it was so funny, but like that's the thing. Like oh, I, I, I do hope for the group's group's sake that we all yeah mellow because it is yeah. very very chaotic and it's gonna be a very very long 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 session yeah. if we keep having like these dirty interactions like of yeah, course of course it's, it's gonna be a bit brutal so i think that vault is gonna take a step back next episode and just try and focus on his actual goal not, yeah. not just <laughs> yeah jet's a, jet's yeah. definitely going to try to stop thinking so emotionally when when he's uh when his emotions are up he'll try to I stop reckon. acting I reckon it gets really hard, like the later, like the further in you get, because the more comfortable you get, it seems the emotions go from here to just keep yep. creeping, creeping. Like by the end of it, man, I was so wide awake and just like I spoke to uh, Christmas after it, and oh my god, I was just like, "What the hell was that?" <laughs> we spoke for like twenty minutes, half an hour, or something like, like that afterwards. Heart just absolutely yeah, thumping. Like, like, oh. How bloody unlucky was I? That was yeah. bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, but that, I mean, and especially late at night as well. Like, we're going on for nearly a four hour session. And we were exhausted. We were like, the recording right. itself was four and a half hours. <sighs> and we were so, speaking for a good 40 minutes before we started recording. So, yeah, we were just like, I think a lot of us were getting tired at that point. I think we were like, 
oh, like I, I could feel my emotions coming out as an individual into my character. And I'm like, no, 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 <laughs> you separate yeah. you two because this is where we'll start losing friendships in real life. And I'm not about it. I'm, I'm happy <laughs> to keep my friendships. <laughs> so I'm like, nah, like, and that's where like, I hope it cools down. Because I think that we can accomplish a lot as a Rudian 5. Like, I think that we can do yeah. a lot together. 100%. And I think that we all have abilities that we can use together. Mm. So I do hope that there is, like, some mutual respect. Like, I don't think it'll be perfect. And I, I kind of glad that it's not because it'll be, like, yeah. I roll for encounter. I roll, oh, unlucky, next. But, like, it would be very robotic. I'm glad that there's a little bit of tension in the group. But yeah. I hope there is that mutual point where we're, like, let's work together. We've got a common goal. We need to do it. Let's do it. Yeah, no, I, I completely agree. Uh, where who do you think the current uh, champion is? Because uh, it should be red. Uh, I mean, everything that's going on at the moment that is a very solid question. Uh, and could this be in that time before red sort of retires? Because he uh, red gets messed up by the elite four, um, afterwards because. In, in the manga, the Elite Four are, like, genocidal maniacs. Um, really? And, yeah, oh, dude. The Elite Four. If, everyone, if you have not ever read the Pokemon Adventures manga, read it. It is full of death. It's full of... Oh, it's so bad. Uh, Lance and the Elite Four, their goal is to wipe out everyone that they deem not worthy to be a Pokemon trainer. And by wipe out, I mean kill. Wow. Murder. Like, three quarters of the Kanto gym leaders are all Team Rocket officers. Uh, it is intense, man. <clears throat> um, yeah, that sounds intense as. Oh, yeah. And uh, since uh, since uh, I finally got physical copies of the first three volumes of the Collector's Edition, be on the lookout for a, uh, a manga review of that one, guys. Oh, I think it's a uh, giveaway then. I was like, oh, hello. Giveaway? No, hello. <laughs> not these ones. These are mine. Uh, but yeah, so Red ends up getting super messed up and frozen in like an ice beam or something. I think it's from Agatha. Maybe really? from Agatha. Yeah, and he ends up retired. That's why he's out in Mount Silver in the Gen 2 games, because there mm -hmm. are hot springs in Mount Silver that are meant to have healing properties. So that's why he's in Mount Silver. He's trying to get the use of his hands back because he feels that he can't, if he can't throw Pokeballs, he can't be a Pokemon master. So he's trying to get his hands back. Wow, okay. I had no yeah. idea about this. These are things that I, I need to do a bit more research on because clearly I had no idea. <laughs> Again, no it doesn't idea. mean any of this is going to be canon to our story, but... Might be, might be. Could be. I'd be interested. I, I am very interested to see the the way that you and Cooper are going to become Elite Four champions. Is it gonna be that you beat the Elite Four and then Cooper has to verse you for the for the uh the championship? So, so 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 what could happen, uh and Amy, if you're listening, the new Pokemon Scarlet and Violet games coming out uh October eighteenth October eighteenth, October eighteenth, twenty twenty two. No, November. November eighteenth. Yeah, I was gonna say October. That's I'm what, like, oh really? my god, that's only next month. Yes. <laughs> no, um, <laughs> October 18th. No. November 18th. They've yeah. recently shown in their fifth trailer that you, there's no champion. The way they do it is you've got champion level trainers. So if you beat the Elite Four, you beat the champions, you don't become the new champion, you become a champion level trainer. So that could be a cool way Amy runs it. That way it's not just a constant... Cooper and I challenging each other for that championship spot every other day. Yeah, yeah. So it could just get that title of champion trainer. It'd be interesting. I'm yeah, interested not... to see. Hmm. Hmm. Well, I yeah. mean, I think I think Cooper's uh, Cooper just needs to start catching. Yeah, yeah. it's fair. It's not gonna happen when you uh. Well, I've had the polywag that I was trying to get. Wow. <laughs> your, that polywag was wrecking your EV, bro. Well. Hey, man, I just one shot. I, like... I mean, it definitely needed the assistance, but uh, yeah, I wasn't expecting a straight wipe out, that's for sure. <laughs> well, goddamn, one of those polywags knew Blizzard. One of them knew Psychic, bro. Pretty sure yeah, one like... knew Psychic and the other knew Blizzard. One, or one yeah. knew Psychic and Blizzard, and I'm like, holy crap, catch this polywag. <laughs> Yeah, bro, some of them was, like, nuts. 
Yeah, but, it was insane. I mean, like, I can't remember if it was Finn or you. I, I don't think it was yours because your Poliwag had good ability and stats, but rubbish moves. But not great moves, yeah. Yeah, Finn had good moves, but rubbish stats. Yeah. So, See, I, I needed... I needed that ability, Water Absorb, for the Cerulean City Gym. Because at the moment, everything I've got is super super weak to water, except that Poliwag now. So now whenever Misty yeah. hits, uh, if it's Misty, hits me with a Water-type move, no damage. Yeah, but then all of a sudden, I mean, what moves have you got to use against Misty? And that's if it's Misty and, and it's her original team. Uh, well, if it's still a Water-type Gym, I guess we'll find out. You're going to have to get some moves in there because otherwise you're not going to be doing anything to Misty as well. Yeah. Look, up. it's a, it's far away. We still have to go through Viridian Forest. And what can we catch in there? Is there a Pikachu in there? <clears throat> uh, there's obviously going to be grass types in there. So plenty plenty to go up against that. Um, at the moment, I think I would struggle. Oh, no, wait, because I've got, I've got uh, Poliwag. So I'm going to breeze through Brock if needed. I can just super effective hit on Brock. Because Poliwag's level 10 as well. So Pe Sorry, Peaches. Peaches is level 10. Yeah, Peaches. Yeah. Uh, so, with the gyms, are they going to be group battles? I hope not. Hmm. Unless unless Amy does it really well, um, I kind of hope not. I, I can't hope that it's a 2v2 kind of thing. Because, I mean, you and Cooper are clearly wanting to do it. Finn wants to catch everything. Burgess just wants to camp everywhere. Yo, that could actually work. Coops say they are. That could be something Amy's riding into it to sort of. Because we, you and I, I think you and I might be the only two taking on the gym challenge. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> they might do that. They'll do. You know, we send out one Pokemon each, and we do a two v two. Do two v two. Yeah. That'd put a lot of uh. Yo, that'd be that'd be cool. That would mean that you and you and Cooper have to work together, or otherwise. Yes. Yeah, you know, well. <laughs> <laughs> no walking behind Cooper and growling at his Pokemon. You. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he might. He might do that still. It's not very nice, but... Uh, no. I was, I was very tempted to when you were using Poliwag to come up and, like, charm your defense or something down or, like do it back to you but then i was like nah it's a bit hostile <laughs> like i've already had a lot of sus things in this app chill chill but it'll yeah. be interesting it'll yeah be interesting. a lot of things happened in that episode to be honest yeah it was a big do you one. have um <clears throat> do you have any wish list pokemon you want to catch coops if, if you um, want to share them i don't really have a like a set top pokemon that i kind of want to get mm -hmm. i just obviously want to get Really strong Pokemon, mm. obviously. Um, running a little bit behind there, but yeah. So uh, you'll catch up. Uh, I don't think you're that far behind Cooper as much as you think you is. Like Rev's, yeah. Rev's got the ability to turn into pretty much whatever you need. Really, you just need stones. Yeah, I mean, really. it was yeah, it was important. It was important getting the um, getting Rev for sure. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, who? Who would you like Rev to evolve into? At this stage, I'm still not a hundred percent sure, to be honest. Um, just yeah. Do you reckon I'm you'll do it out of who you like, or and more of a necessity for the moment? Uh, it's a bit of a yeah. Oh, I can't really say, to be honest. Like, cause I, yeah, as I say, we're only two two days into the campaign, really. So, I mean, yeah. I mean, anything could come up and. I might want to turn against you, or might want to turn against Fault, and that might factor um, yeah. what I want my rev to be. So, yeah, it's a bit what, of what, you, what what uh, options does he have? All of them. All of them. Yep, every evolution. And can and Clint, um, um, what's the Umbreon? Espeon. Espeon. Yeah, Umbreon, so, Espeon. Yeah. And who's the who's the new ones? I always forget the new ones' names. Sylveon. Yep. Oh, and Glaceon and Leafeon. Oh, Leafeon. Yeah. So he's got yeah. actual options for them as well. I would assume so. How's he going to get Sylveon? Uh, so I believe Amy's working on a like an affection system. How much our Pokemon okay. like us? Because Sylveon evolves off affection. Wow. Okay. All right. So Evie and uh. Oh. 
or she, could she even could, she could just homebrew a, a stone and make it you know like a love stone or something right the amount of things that she was talking about in the chat about yeah like the thing that i'm like oh that sounds so cool please implement something like that in there like obviously we won't say it because if it comes yeah. up and it's it's a good surprise but yeah, some like, of that stuff is insane. Please, please. <laughs> no, she's she's done an amazing job, and all credit to her. Oh, she for continues what she's done. to. Honestly, it's it's like I wish I wish everyone could see the amount of effort she puts in behind the scenes. Like, amazing yeah. credit, credit, absolute credit. Hundred percent agree. Hundred percent agree. Yeah. Uh, I mean... what else is there? Anything else? Uh, Vergus didn't get his encounter, so I believe we're starting next session with his encounter. Yep. Uh, we had Finn's encounter trying to get Sandry. And and his very clever tactics yeah. about how to get the Sandry out of the hole. Yeah. yeah. Clever tactic. I had the clever tactic. Yeah, but you, I mean, obviously it was a clever tactic. Happen. But the, he didn't, didn't he, use it. Didn't he, didn't he spoil the waters in there in that it, race? Yeah. Up? Nah, he said it seems a bit too hostile. How did he manage to coax the Sandry out? I, uh, luck. Luck. Oh, okay. I thought he, I thought he um, boarded out the um, sand tree, To be honest, nah, I, I'm positive because only one ended up coming out. Mm. Mm. Only one. Do you, what level was it? Do you, do you remember? Anyone remember? Oh yeah, yeah, it was a uh, level five, I think. So there was a level Damn. five female and a level like nine male, I think. So how does oh, it actually, have... he might have got the bigger one. How does it feel to have the strongest Pokemon in the group? Uh look, well, Peaches Kun, you're uh gonna be a, gonna be an uh valuable member. Uh, do you know what level? Have you still got the Pokedex open? Yes, sir. What level does Poliwag evolve to Poliwell? Oh, and am I gonna do a dirty instead of going to Poliwrath? Will I evolve it to a Politoad? No, I'm joking. I'm not insulting Politoads. <laughs> What do we got, um, man? You'll evolve. It must go past 20 because it's 25. 25, okay. Not bad. 15 more levels. And then Poly Wrath, you, will, you can do it at with level the water 30 stone. Water, with the water stone. But yeah. you have to be level 30 to do it. Oh. Um, or Poly Toad needs to be holding a King's Rock King's and Rock. level 30. Yep. So Alright, so I need to like start to find myself a water well. stone. I mean, I hope the XP goes up dramatically. XP will, has um... to go up dramatically, otherwise yeah. our Pokemon are never going to evolve. <laughs> but I, I think, I think, Bro, that... forever. yeah, I think, uh, and I don't know, she hasn't mentioned this to me or I haven't asked. Uh, I think we'll see huge chunks of XP at like story milestones, especially for the players. Um, instead of, you know, we just getting drip fed one or two. If we actually complete a quest, if we're sent on a quest or... Uh, a story marker, then she might be like, alright, either everyone just level up or everyone get 200 experience points sort of thing. Damn. Yeah. Damn. Yeah, that's what I'm expecting. I ended up with uh, a lot of trainer experience, so hopefully, hopefully I can get to level 3 next step. Oh, yeah, let me take a look. How close am I? Uh, who we got? We still got uh, Cooper and Vergus to hit level 2, aren't they? They haven't hit level two. Nah, yet. I hit level oh, yeah. two. Oh, you hit level two. Nice, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. Finally, pretty sure, <laughs> sure Vergus should have, because he would have got an encounter with me, mm -hmm. which he would have got XP at the very start. Yeah, and he got experience for his role. Last episode, he got a plus four. No, he got a Ooh, plus six five, experience sorry. points off level three. Six. Holy, how much am I? Uh, roll 20. Uh, yeah, I've, um, I'm going to oh, start yeah. putting... You've done all right. Yeah, I've done all right. Yeah, and you've I done think, good. I think because I'm also using a martial artist, I can use attacks myself. I think that's going to help yeah, me. Yeah, that's going to, uh, 100%. 100%. Um, and I've got, I've got some ideas that I want to play with next, next time we go <laughs> for a rest or next time we go to camp, I'll want to talk to Amy about, um... Ooh, wasting an extra sounds... experience oh yeah okay uh i wait so from level two what does the xp need to be for next level uh sorry i'm just opening mine up again mine says 10 
So I'm just like, yeah, then clearly that's not right. No, it's 20. So it's to 20 is, is 2 yeah. to 3. Yeah, so I'm also 6 off, which I Yeah, don't know. you and I, I think we were very, very close to... I'm, I'm the same as you. I'm 6, yeah. so... That's not far off. And then hopefully that will uh, impact a lot of our abilities. But I like the fact that that also plays like a cool, crucial role as well. What's that? That your trainer, when it goes up, you get like edges and features new yeah. as well. Well, otherwise we're just sort of playing with our stock standard characters from the very first session. If they can't actually develop and get additional things, it would be boring. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's very true. I mean, the other things that I noticed... So, you use Pokey Breeder, but you weren't successful. What do you have to roll at 10? 12. 12? Yeah. Out of a D20? So, I, I feel like something might have been wrong there. No, so it's not in a D20. You've got to get it on a, ch on a Pokemon Education check. Which but is I a feel... D20, isn't it? Uh, well, mine is... Actually, no, it's higher than that because I rolled a 23 last episode. Yeah. Uh, so for me... I'm just reopening up roll 20. Uh, come on, come on, come on, come on. But I feel like I might have done it wrong. I feel like there might have needed to be additional things there. I'm, I'm not 100% sure. Let's have a look. So. Or... Uh, Pokey. Where am I? Breeder. Breeder, yes. Uh, if you were able to give two Pokemon that are compatible for breeding at least four hours of time alone, you may make a Pokemon education check with a DC of 12. If you say, oh yeah, yeah, so you got to make a Pokemon education check if you, if you, uh, get, it's either you have to get a 13 or a 12 and above, you'll succeed. Uh, and you're guaranteed to produce an egg if you give if you give them an additional four hours. So another reason why I had a private room is because I knew I'd have to give them eight hours of alone time. So I would have gone and like slept on the couch downstairs or something. Well, that would have been risky. Yeah. We're not trusting everyone. No one would have well, known who else well, was in there. Just Vault and Kuba. I mean, I knocked at the door. So I did know. Imagine how... Uh, how what much more upset you, you would have been if uh, you had, a, you know, walked in on two banging Pokemon. I'm Maybe. actually curious, Fault. Um, I'm curious. What would have happened if um, Jet didn't answer the door? What would he have done? Uh, that's a good I nearly question. didn't. I nearly that, didn't. That is a good question. Uh, I mean, if you... I would have found a way. I would have tried to sneak away. in or uh, sneak around. I wouldn't have burst in. I'm not going to go and kick down the door. Like, I don't think that's a good introduction no. to anyone sleeping in there. And obviously, I knew it was occupied as well. So, I, I would probably try and uh, either find an extra key. Like, I could have gone downstairs, talked to Nurse Joy, and be like, oh my gosh, I'm staying in a private room. I'm so sorry. I've misplaced my key. Roll for Guile. Got my key. Well, yeah. Um... Or just camped at the front until I found out who was there. Yep. Yeah. And I was standing at the front. Just uh, wanted to watch him sleep. Either that or a, a, a charm in an avatar not going at it. I'm just looking at awkwardly at him like, why are you making us do this, Dad? This is not fair, Dad. <laughs> yeah, I, I felt super, super dirty about it. So. Yeah, I, I and didn't their reputation go down with you? Uh no, I was able to save it, but moving forward with the new system, it will. Which will be very interesting. I wonder if yes. I mean, so does that mean that you'll have, well, I'll use me, for example. Does that mean my reputation with Cushion is going to be very high because I have a bond with it straight off the bat? Could be. And Vergus just doesn't care about his oddish. At all. No, <laughs> didn't you just say, oh, yeah, thanks, dead brother. <laughs> like yeah. something like that puts his yeah. mess up and then when he tried to tell his Bulbasaur off for doing something he said I hit it and he's like oh Wait, it hit what? me back yeah when did he say that for he what said about that I can't remember when but he did say they hit each other really 
Yeah. What? So who hit each other? Bulbasaur and Oddish? Mm-hmm. No, 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 no. Burgess and Bulbasaur. Like, Burgess went up and just, like, pimp-slapped Bulbasaur. <laughs> Bulbasaur, like, vine-whipped or tackled Burgess. Can we also just talk about how Fender slapped my fish? Like, why? I don't recall that happening. <laughs> no. Nah. No, it's just making that up. You didn't actually <laughs> see the fish. I didn't I was think that say. happened. I was, I was telling... I was oh, telling what? I was telling Pokeboy in his stream. Like, you, know, you know when you go to, like, new car dealerships and, like, how much is this bad boy done? Like, to slap the top <laughs> of the roof or something? Like, I wanted Finn to do something like that with Magic Cup and be like, how much XP does this whole thing have? <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, uh, oh. just shunned me like I was nothing. So... Yeah. Boys, whichever one of if I if I get copyright striked for playing Lincoln Park music in the back of my videos, thank you. I was wondering Jesus. why there was. Music. I was wondering why there's been music for the last hour I and a half. Yeah. I, didn't, I honestly um, didn't know that you could hear it in the background. Give me a sec. Thank you. <laughs> oh, there was a lot of music going on. So, oh my and God. it just started, and I could tell what that last song was. I'm like, oh, I can tell, but. Is someone is like uh is it gonna be enough to be recognized? But it just got too loud towards the end then I'm like, oh no. Yeah. It felt like it was getting louder and louder. Yeah. <laughs> yep. uh, oh. I thought it was I thought it was uh, your um your girlfriend, to be honest, Chris. Yeah, I thought it was Taylor too. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, I thought it was crap. Oh yeah. That wasn't me. It wasn't me, it was Taylor upstairs. Which is not even oh, okay, he said her name as well, so I'm okay now. <laughs> That's right. Oh, good. <laughs> I'm like, like, no. Yeah, no. But I, I um, didn't know. Like, I could see my thing moving. I'm like, I'm moving my chair. Like, can you hear a squeak on my chair or something? But it makes sense. It's pretty No, loud. that whole time. And I, I I was just telling Coop, I'm like, dude, I know that song. I love that song. Um, <laughs> And I'm like, oh, no. But, but could just, like, automatic software pick up that that's playing in the background? And it just started to get louder at the I end. I can hear it, yeah, through the um, I was, I was through the headset. To, I was trying to turn down my mic so you couldn't hear it as as why. Because <laughs> now that I notice it, I'm like, oh no. <laughs> oh, no. Um, is there anything else to cover? We're about to hit two hours. Mm. No, uh, Ooh, not in particular. What um, what the DM oh, it's just. Gonna ask just a general question. How do you, how do you think you guys are progressing so far? Like, you happy with how the progression is? And I'll let you go first. I'm I'm enjoying it, and I I got to keep reminding myself we're literally still only just in like in in session two. It couldn't have taken more than that. Couldn't have been more than an hour, hour and a half maximum, like in game time. So while I'm yeah. thinking, oh, I wish I was getting more experience, I'm like, well, in an hour and a half, that does kind of make sense. It's just that it took us five hours. Um, yeah. <laughs> so far, I'm I'm happy with it. I, I think Amy's made a, a compelling yeah. story. Uh, I think she, uh, I think she is making cool encounters. I think she's setting up a lot of really great stuff for us. I think that the campaign, amazing, honestly, can't falter it. Uh, some of my decisions as well, I've not liked. Um, I remember thinking, oh crap, I put myself in the hole here and now I've just got to roll with the punches. So, um, yeah, I think ultimately I'm happy with how I'm going. I wish I could progress a bit more. Um, and obviously didn't roll great encounters, so I couldn't get myself at least a fourth. But yeah. as a character, I think there's some things that I would change if I had the opportunity to, but overall loving the campaign hooked, obsessed. <laughs> yep. Literally yeah. I come home from work and I'm like, all right, let's have a look. I, I was going to say the same thing. Like the campaign couldn't have been any better so far. And the DM, Emily, I'm honest, like, thank you so much. Um, you've honestly made this super enjoyable for everyone mm -hmm. not just us three here it's for everyone that i'm sure that's watching and to um to finn and to um vegas as well <laughs> so um yeah it's so from yeah from all of us thank you so much once again honestly honestly and I, I think the biggest thing about it is that 
she's genuinely passionate about it as well. And you can mm-hmm. see it, it's coming out. Like it's, yeah, she's it's, not half-assing it. No. Yeah. It's not like she just rocks up, sits on her chair, and just goes, I'll just think of everything in the air. Like, she's thought about it. She's listening to it. And yeah. and now, I don't know about you guys, but, like, I've chatted with uh, the DM off stream about how I want to go, where I want to mm. progress, what I want to do. And, like, now she's sending me, like, links, like, things that will help me, like, with yeah. character development. Like, and I was just like, yeah, this is perfect. Like, this is where I want to go. And she's helping me, like, educate me on the things that I want to do. So... It, it's really yeah. like important that she's involved in that type of thing but mm-hmm. honestly credit like really well Definitely. done like yeah. really well and, done. And she has to be involved otherwise we're gonna just pull some super stupid crap you know five <laughs> sessions in and ruin you know 30 hours of her planning so oh, she should be dirty <laughs> yeah so any any big decisions let's make sure she's across them uh yeah we, we're yeah, not trying to good. surprise and shock her we're trying to surprise and shock everyone else <laughs> Yeah. No, no, no throat kicks. Yeah, no, no, st- no stomping on one of the players' throats in the second it, session. I mean, I mean, kind of like a bit off a bit here. But are you guys talking to Emily off stream, like about character development, or is that just solely me? Like, no. So I've I've spoken to her, telling her who and why uh, I'm going to get rather violent uh, with. Um. So I, I've let her know that that's going to happen, and if we run into these characters. Uh, it's going to become a bit of a violent episode. Oh, I thought you were talking about me for a minute. I was like, damn, I'm in trouble here. Next episode. All <laughs> 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 guys. <laughs> Get throat kicked. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so you got a bit of a vendetta against the group. Okay. Okay. Maybe it's Team Rocket. Maybe. Maybe it's Comet or Nebula. Maybe, maybe I know more about them than I'm letting on. Uh, anyway, I can actually hear Alex has woken up. So I'm going to end it here, though. Yeah. Uh, but guys, thanks for coming out, man. Uh, it's a lot of fun. I'm loving these behind-the-scenes ones. Um, we're going to keep doing them. Guys, thanks for being so cool. Uh, it's <laughs> been absolutely... It's been great. Like, thank you for inviting me on to this. And, yeah. Of course, man. I, I also think it's important that everyone sees the three of us are actually friends. Uh, despite yeah. how our characters <laughs> are acting, we are yeah, really that's good true. friends. Like, we like, are really good friends. <laughs> like, we know that uh, we can. I push promise. Them down. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Like I said, thank you for watching. Have a great night. See ya. Peace.